Thank you very much for joining us. Just before we get started, uh, please be reminded that our broadcast can be seen by those on the CanalSat network in English or, and in French. If you are on the network, you can choose your preferred languages in the blue button or the info button on your remote control to change the settings. Now let's get into, into it. Cameroon's government has condemned a mutiny that took place at the central uh, prison in Yaoundé on Monday. Minister of Communication, Reni uh, Emmanuel Sadi, in a communique issued on Tuesday, vowed that if effective uh, investigation will be made to bring out the truth behind the riots at what is known to be Cameroon's largest prison called Kondegi Central Prison. Several detainees were injured during the revolt, former Prime Minister Inoni Ephraim and a former minister, Urban Olenguena Awono, were amongst uh, those injured in the uprising there. Well, Jerry, Amnesty International reacted to this revolt by political and separatist detainees in Yaoundé prison is calling on the authorities to refrain from excessive use of force and to conduct an independent and effective investigation to the use of firearms and live ammunition. But according to the government, no shooting was carried out during the intervention and 177 detainees were handed over to the police. Uh, let me quickly add that this central prison in Yaoundé is overcrowded. Uh, planned to accommodate 1,500 people, uh, but today the number has more than doubled, according to estimates. Many activists are calling for a turn round of the situation in Cameroon. Maximilian Ngombe is the director of REDAC in Yaoundé, Cameroon. She joins us now from there. Good morning to you and a warm welcome to the morning call. So, Maximilian, you work with prisoners regularly, uh, especially at that uh, prison where the uprising or the mutiny occurred on Monday night. What would you say concerning the demands of uh, the uh, prisoners at, the, uh, at, the, at that uh, prison? And uh, actually, what would you say concerning the conditions in the prison. La prison centrale de, de Kondengui, qui a été conçue dans, pendant les années de la colonisation, well, the Kondigui Central Prison, which uh, was built during the colonial years, was planned to house 800 people. But today, it is home to more than 4,000 people. Prisoners are more than detainees, so you can understand that the conditions of detentions are inhumane, degrading, the infrastructure is dilapidated, so it can only generate or degenerate into, into what we have experienced and what we are seeing today. Madame Ngombe, on vient de le dire. Well, as reports show that a significant number of separatist activists are in this prison, why do you think such high numbers exist? Well, since I can recall, uh, since 2014, for Cameroon to be able to fight the terrorist sect Boko Haram, I adopted a law for the fight against terrorism that immediately turned out to be a law that instead of protecting civilians against terrorism, has become the executioner of all those who fight for fundamental human rights and freedom. So look at this, when you start looking for a contest such as um, sympathizing or aiding terrorism or hostility against one party, it falls back on the Article 2, which already leads to the death penalty. As there is usually no factual evidence to show that one person or individual participated in a terrorism act against the land, you are just charged and then you are brought before the military court, which places you under a detention warrant without any other form of procedure. It is very cruel, but unfortunately, this is what is happening in Cameroon. Do you think that what happened there at the Yaoundé uh, Central Prison could uh, occur in other parts of the city, or of the country rather? Well, 
It's not even about what can happen. Is that it will happen? Since all the prisoners in Douala, Yaounde, and I believe Amenda are, are, are prisons that were built before independence. And as I told you, Yaounde, instead of 800 people, is housing over 4,000. Douala, perhaps 600, but now houses more than 3,000. And prisoners are the majority. There is no corridor between death row inmates and ordinary prisoners, and even those who are political prisoners, including activists, even women and minors. So all these people are there in addition to the corrupt staff who have ill who are who are ill equipped and try to benefit from all those who come to meet or visit those who are accused and detained. So all these phenomena mean that what happened in Yaounde will absolutely happen in Douala and will happen in Bamenda and elsewhere.